Welcome to Journey of One. This is a show where I travel around Southern California to check out fun events and interesting places to see. Many times I'll be on my own, showing that you can have a unique experience when you travel solo, as well as showing that it's okay to do things on your own. But if friends or family join you, then all the better. So thanks for watching. Let's begin the journey. This week's journey is to the Los Angeles Museum of Natural History, located in Exposition Park. Across from the museum is the LA Coliseum, a sports stadium modeled after the ancient Roman Coliseum. I loved all the grand architecture inside the museum. Definitely helped to inspire awe as soon as you walked in, although this cool dinosaur fossil display might have helped a bit with that. I was excited to start exploring with the Dinosaur Hall, as I've loved dinosaurs since I was a kid. The hall featured a massive collection of complete dinosaur fossils, as well as hundreds of fossil pieces collected from all over the world. He may not have been the biggest, but this T-Rex skull was scary enough up close. If you've seen the Jurassic Park movies, you might have recognized that guy, and these dinos reminded me of the climactic scene from the first movie. I enjoyed seeing my favorite dinosaur, the Stegosaurus, battling off this dangerous Allosaurus. From the second floor, I got a T-Rex's view of how he would have seen his prey. In the middle of the atrium that connected the Dinosaur Hall and the Mammal Hall was this beautiful sculpture, centerpiece of the beautiful architecture in the room and capped by a gorgeous stained glass ceiling. Coming into the Age of Mammals exhibits, you're greeted by the fossil of this Paleoparadoxy and animals different than the reptile dinosaurs. I really like this bison skull as well as this fierce looking saber tooth skull. I would have loved to have seen a real live woolly mammoth. This thing was huge. Next up was a hall exploring the history of Los Angeles. I especially love this quote found inside. It seems a lot of early Los Angeles was all about pulling up oil from all over the place. I guess that's why LA has always had such an ingrained car culture. Los Angeles has also always been deeply rooted in the Mexican culture and its people, and the Spanish roots are also seen throughout Southern California in these missions built so long ago that you can still visit today. Here you can get a bit of perspective on the enormous size of LA County, covering a huge area and many cities. I like this car setup with the screen behind it, like how they used to simulate driving in old films. Here you can see Union Station, which I visited a couple weeks ago, and this 3D model of the surrounding areas, which formed the center of where LA started and grew out of. Next we checked out the Gem and Mineral Hall, which was filled with hundreds and hundreds of pieces of exotic minerals and stones. Maybe it's me, but this one reminded me of a popsicle. This piece of gold is pretty famous. As its name suggests, it really does look like a golden bear. This Stibnite piece was so dazzling, it looked alien, like out of a movie. In fact, the breadth of this collection here was incredible. There were so many unusual shaped minerals, most of which seemed like they couldn't be of this planet as they were so foreign looking, like this wolfenite. Although this gold on display was more familiar, what was insane was that it was all real gold. Even Scrooge McDuck would have been jealous of this collection.
This giant quartz crystal ball was entrancing. I nearly swore I could see my future inside it. Tucked away in the back inside a vault was where they kept the gems and precious stones. Once I saw the collection, I could see why it needed such security. It was unreal seeing the beauty of all these gems, in so many different shapes, sizes, and colors, like these stones which had star-shaped reflections in them. What was funny was that in this room, with all these brilliant gems, the diamonds were probably the least impressive to see. I bet you never thought opals could look this brilliant and colorful. I know I didn't. I felt like this enormous topaz was like something out of an Indiana Jones movie, a magical gem used by a tribe for mystical powers. A staple of any natural history museum is the animal exhibits, showing dioramas of the exotic animals from all over the world. These exhibits are pretty cool because they often give you a closer and more realistic view of how the animals would be in their natural habitats than you would find in a zoo, for example. Seeing the size of these grizzly bears reminded me of how screwed I'd be if I came across one in the wild. I feel your pain, Leo. The museum had three main animal halls. Downstairs were the African mammals and North American mammals, which you just saw, and upstairs was this second of the North American mammal halls. This ram looks like he just got a great idea. Hey guys, let's move our team back to LA. Upstairs also had this extensive hall of birds with an incredible collection of hundreds of different birds on display that would be any ornithologist's dream to explore. There were interesting scenes staged to show some of the birds' natural habitats, like a rocky mountainside for condors to perch on, and also including this dark and kind of creepy rainforest scene. There was a display showing how birds have affected our culture and lives, including a display of TV, movie, and commercial mascots. Beyond the bird hall was this working dinosaur lab with actual scientists working on fossils during the day. Upstairs was also a collection of ancient Mayan, Incan, and Aztec artifacts, including this creepy statue, which is sure to give me nightmares. If you've been yearning to get more hands-on with the exhibits, or have kids, be sure to see the Discovery Center and Insect Zoo upstairs, where you can touch and explore more closely many pieces from the museum. However, downstairs they have a much more interactive area called the Nature Lab, filled with tons of hands-on and really neat ways to explore the natural world. Apparently, my phone shows up as pretty hot to a rattlesnake's point of view. This spider display seemed like the origin of how Spider-Man got his powers. My mom and I played around creating a picture on this large touchscreen till we had it just right. It would be easy to get lost down here and spend a lot of time checking out all the fascinating things to see and do. There was so much to see and do here at the Natural History Museum, I couldn't even fit half of it into this video. Be sure to visit and see it all for yourself. Thanks as always for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and check back next week as I go on another Journey of One.